Hello, and we are back with milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. Hope you all have your milk tea ready. Mmm, mm, that is delicious. Ooh. Maybe a little too much sugar. Ah, oh, it's still very tasty. Alright, let us return to the grocery store and see if we can actually get milk this time. You know, without having a uh, mental breakdown. Oh, that might be a bit too loud. look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying in no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. <sighs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that... I break into a run and dash towards the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No. No, no, I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door, and it flew open. As I expected, there was no living corpses inside, but there was a big bag of milk I'd bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf, in a store, or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, Nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. formless creature at the door. It locks me in my clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my butt and body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again, I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature 
tears squeeze as my hands until my veins start bulging. I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. No man says that. Its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling into my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor. Just like last time. But... Why? Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell. My veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me. Kill me. Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Red splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need over me. Everything turns pledge black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Oops, already did. I say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed pre preparations. I wash my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now, I have to sleep again even though I don't feel any need for it. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it, do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy. Filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No. There's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood-red color. There were some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No. 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 I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. 
next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. Not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some t small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? Hey. Hey, long time no see. Hasn't even been an hour, dummy. There you go, bullying me again. Are you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, all right? I'll just stay silent until the medicine effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm? It's so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Hey, <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. so happy all of a sudden. And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple hours ago. I don't know what you mean. Quit your lying. Nuh-uh. I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see. Yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery look the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. Wouldn't have helped me even if I sunk him through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal square Pyramidal stru structures cubed. A pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. How do you feel? You're mocking me, right? 
I'm obligated to ask you this at least a couple of times per session. Session, huh? You don't like that word? I'm fine. No, you're not. I... don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you gotta know how challenging that was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? What do you think? I can't be sure about anything. You don't take me seriously anyway. And why did you do it? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true. The pain subsided for a bit at the time. But now I feel it in triple force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating traveling down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill in the air and catch it with my mouth. ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. What do you want then? I, I just want to lie down for a bit. ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. But I am your thoughts. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can you make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. Pick a thought, any thought. I 
don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. The fireflies now start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough. I hate you. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? No. A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone. If you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better. Believe me. And now, start over. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Forget about them and go to bed. No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts, or else... I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. I can be anywhere. Suddenly I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already. Oh, we're almost there. But I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. It's a thing. I have no idea. This is... weird. Will you tell me? intensely. They're so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Did you drink milk? I wonder. I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another. Will my eyes stop itching? If I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, all my eyelashes, one after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then, then I need to have a bath, and then, here, drink some milk. No! I stand in the middle of my room. My mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. 
You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. My thoughts are hiding from me. To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. Guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. If I make it the, even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? Who? Me? No, of course not. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you now. Rude. Alright then. So, we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch? Yeah. My, oh my. I have an idea. Last time, I am putting a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. You want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. It's just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie! There's smoke coming from your clothes, I should probably tell you. <sighs> Whatever. I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. Ha! <sighs> the tickles! One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Good boy. Quite the number of objects we have out of us. Something's wrong with all that garbage. Your usual notebook pages, glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, Firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. 
let's continue searching. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you there. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging out of the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. Suspended closet like a cabinet. Huh. What's the distinction? I always thought of a closet as being like inset into a wall, but this is, yeah, just a exterior cabinet. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. At all. Like, totally. And I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no you don't. Then act normal. Right. Insects enjoy pollinating flowers and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Are you listening to me at all? I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. And I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. Take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. You can't look at its hands for too long. At first, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction, and they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? No? Let's continue searching then. Sounds experimental.
that one's anxiety inducing. Ooh. Yeah, there's something kind of unnerving about the uh, sound of animals off in the distance, like you're alone in the wilderness. And then merging that with the sound of children laughing is... Huh. And shouting from... I don't even know if that's a human. Okay, well this one just sounds like the heat register in my house that is way too squeaky and somebody needs to come by and fix that. Ugh. Okay, that's probably one of those. Look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. Bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm? I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. Well, my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Could you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. Alright, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. Fine. Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. Only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time it thinks about the further course of action. Then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. A lot of radios. And they all appear to be broken in some manner.
I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I'm taking out all the pens and notebooks out of there. I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? You think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What did you like the most there? Hmm? Well, the rooms were really bright. Not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me. Let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft. And the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. But they probably got told off so hard. I smile gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tests were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. What happened, Dad? I don't remember. Does it even matter? Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? Please. Oh, fine. That day, Dad picked me up from school earlier, explaining to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there, we had dinner together, and went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? What, if, what is this game if not repetition? Tell me about it again. Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. Teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what that little brat has done. Then he pushed me to the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this further. No. You'll tell me again. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mom was not home. Again. I hate Mom so much. What happened next? Suddenly, I feel someone's eyes on my back. Knowing that these moments should never, ever be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. I look at my bag again, lightly pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real. Sadly. Whatever. I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of anger. I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse, and I'll go blind. It's already happened. Countless times. What do you mean, you'll go blind? I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing, and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. 
firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then flies up. Here you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while, and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure. Let's continue searching. Oh, is that all the fireflies we need? I'm not done yet. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Well, maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one. Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form a coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another. And how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems that the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. The distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with a headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped. Even though the wind is still howling from every direction, it can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. If I wait a little longer. If I wait. Open your eyes. No. It's okay. Just do it. No way. I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings. Nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking, because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outline of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly? The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. I 
goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. I spent some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then it's buzzing but dies down. Phew. Are you okay? I'm running short on time, so let's continue searching. signal on that one. Just somebody idling. of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. Now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We'd better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You're the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but... Cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? I do. It's not easy to get out of here. about that. Imagine myself being a firefly that's looking straight at a giant fan. And... I'd be so jealous. The only thing that prevented... The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in. And the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. Turn my eyes toward an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. 
There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. Fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. I look at the amount of pills, and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't... What's wrong? I almost skipped my dose for a day. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. I've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Is that an accusation? Of course not. It was what saved me. Well, that's reasonable. I heave a deep sigh. I come closer and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. I let those words leave my lips. One of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, and along with them. A firefly! Hooray! Hey, that's something removed then, though. After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly brushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, it crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to the light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. Well, only if they'd purposely want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder. It's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can do it without my help. Still, Firefly won't hide in a place like that. I'll catch a cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. I doubt it. All the compartments are locked. What if? I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. You should know. It's your, it's your, your compartments. Eh, whatever. sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slap my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside? Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia. Just like tonight. Okay. I think I've only got the one item left. Do I dare touch it? Hmm. I can't. Oops.
That's better. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I guess. I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. Zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some air. Somehow, those words triggered a panic attack in me. Subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but... I feel like someone is watching me. Alright, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year, or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside of bag of milk. And yet... And yet... You don't, have to talk, you don't have to talk out loud for me to understand what you're worried about. I know that already. I also know that her time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have, one small f I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. You no, know, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's the favor? I, um, I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lowest part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working. Hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know. It was a joke. It was a joke. Well, anyway, I wash my face, brush my teeth, lie down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course. I always look sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air. Strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places. Bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? And one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well deserved, I guess. I felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yes exactly like that. 
After that, I stopped. The silhouettes, sliders, and eyes stayed here. I guess they like this place. I always follow in my wake, peeping at me. And I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course! They're still listening, you know. Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to... tell you a bedtime story? Shh! I was trying so hard here. Can you get it? They'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. I know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. And he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, it's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Triska says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. I do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko. His name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go. And I need to think. I'd be happy to. But I don't know the way. Jessica puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. And he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, but not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. On the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have a special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old 
old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, uh, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat. But a scary-looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says, We're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going across a long row of canned products, I realized... Shit. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I... Um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up! Triska lets go of my hand and walks confidently toward one of the few store's customers. The person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello. Can I... I can't hear... He... I can't hear neither the second part of his question, nor the reply he gets. My good-for-nothing friend is freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry toward them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I... Um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, with his mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared. He said... What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresco starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Knowing other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who? Me? Tresco pushes me away and runs off. Trat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang a new sign on the door. There you are! I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you! Move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that is formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. Taking out for the night, homie? Alright, well, thanks for stopping by. Catch you later. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier to towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is it yours? Yes. I'll just leave him home next time. People in the queue not in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Triska starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a retard, too. But... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier, much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees. I grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward his gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. The light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment, and then goes out. You know. He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. It seems like you're not helping me at all. Playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes.
Hey. And that's milk outside a bag of milk. Outside a bag of milk. Well, a lot more going on this time, and uh, much higher production value in it. Unless I did a decent job of navigating, I don't think there's any death routes this time. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll try speeding through again with a slightly different... Uh, I just quit at any time. Fascination with milk. Take a look at all those prescriptions. a day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically, nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. He didn't reply. Are you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? No. Well, then I'm not happy either. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, all right? I'll just stay silent until the medicine effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality... I don't need you at all. Hmm? You're so energetic and I feel great. Which means I can do anything. And you? You can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. 
Yeah, I'm all beside myself. By the way, you're the one that's useless. And pathetic. You try ruining my mood. I wanna have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see. Yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face. Then we'll decide what to do with you. trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me. I try not to drown in their giggling. But then me, the me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile. It bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes. But that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared. Two by two squared. A square squared. A square pyramid squared. A pyramidable... A pyramid... Uh, I still have trouble with that. A pyramidal, a pyramidal structure cubed. A pyramidal structure hypercubed. Pyramidal. I want to add a B in there for some reason. I feel better. My head is splitting apart now. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine. You can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Undoubtedly. Moreover, it's dangerous. I know. And you keep pushing me. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true. The pain subsided for a bit at the time. Now I feel it in triple force. It's so bad. Just drink your medicine already, or I'll stop talking to you. No, don't abandon me. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating traveling down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. Toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. You want to talk? 
talk about it. No, I've had enough of talking. What do you want, then? I... I just want to lie down for a bit. ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them up on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. I don't even have time to think, blink before my thoughts, their fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just, that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough. I hate you. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? Yes. And what do you want me to do then? I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. around the room. There are too many places for a creature here as small as a firefly to hide. It can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. Instead of asking silly questions, help me find my fireflies. To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. I'm making the smallest of messes here. I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't. And I won't. Alright then. So we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. My oh my. 
have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. And I want to be a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. What about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. I want to know what's the best part. You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get into a multiple choice situation. I thought you said this was supposed to be fun! It's gonna cause you to have a panic attack. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. Do what you want. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie. Wowie. scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up as it circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. <sighs> Tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. The outside's normal again. I don't remember when that changed. Hmm, that's just a no-go. Alright. Uh... There's one here. There was one in the trash. Because I can just get the ones that I know of. Uh, oh, wow. I already forgot. Where was it? Here. This is my sketchbook. Half its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can get to the stationery store on foot. I have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an inter interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page. The way it should be. Too bad. I would love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no. I shut my eyes. The distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with a headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped. I know the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. If I wait a little longer, if I wait... Open your eyes. No! It's okay. Just do it. No way! I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. 
Calm down. Calm down. Fine. Open my eyes with utmost caution. Notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings. Nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. You can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Look there. Barely visible light seeps through the pages. With everything new, with every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly? The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into a perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks. It flies up in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. I spend some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Whew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue. There was one in the backpack, I think. Nothing among the medication. Don't think there was anything there. There might have been one under the notes. I don't think I was allowed to open the cabinet. Wasn't one among the plants. I don't think there was one among the alarm clock, nor the vents, nor the lights, nor there, nor there. <sighs> hmm. I looked down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Senseless and cruel. You're there, but I don't care. Is it me you're laughing at? What? I'd never... After all, you're not my pet. I'm not going alone along with this nonsense anymore. Got it? Got it. Hey, it wasn't on purpose this time. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I'm taking all the pens and notebooks out of there. I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? I think everything in my life should be doom and gloom. Well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What do you like the most there? Mm -hmm. The rooms were really bright. Not like at home. That's it. Don't rush me. I remember. Well, the beds were also soft. And the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for a school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago. Tats were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. 
I guess that day has no absolutely no special meaning for you. I told you, it was just a normal day. Okay. Good. I look at my bag again. Light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts. There's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real. Sadly. Whatever. I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse, and I'll go blind. It's already happened. Countless times. What do you mean, you'll go blind? I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing, and it can't even fly. I guess this fi firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. And that's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while, and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure. Let's continue searching. So there, there. He had an anecdote about that fan. I don't think anything came out of it, though. Man, what was the first thing I clicked on before the trash can? Maybe it was the backpack? Got you something. Your usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn to them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, is it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines. Ugly numbers. It's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. A scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking all around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to starting point. No changes at all. Zero sum. Happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony. Breathe in some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. 
subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. There's no way somebody cares about you that much. Just for a couple of minutes, okay? Circular courtyards in the middle of an apartment complex. Ugh. My apartment building looks like a bottomless cooking pot. Instead of soot, it has hundreds of concrete and metal boxes on its walls. There are lights on in the windows. There are muffled voices coming from the inside. A howling wind spirals up and splits it into hundreds of independent streams. It seems like it wants to be heard by every person living here. It must feel so lonely living in endless silence. Your apartment building is pretty weird, isn't it? I could see the horizon from my window before. The building grew for miles in both directions. I guess at some point it circled around and closed in on itself. Nothing unusual about that. How do you feel? I definitely feel. Sometimes more than enough. Still, you're anxious, aren't you? Of course. Moreover, I'm completely terrified. Isn't that obvious? You're looking in every direction, but not up. Uh, this... I've already told you, haven't I? About what? Uh, you know, small stuff. Small stuff make you terrified. It's hard to explain. I climb up the metal railing and let my legs hang down. I sneak short glances at the abyss from time to time. It replies with angry, cold breath. That's how we interact, like old friends. Sometimes I feel like the whole world pretends to be crazy, as if it's trying to make you believe in something that doesn't exist. It's weird, isn't it? Yes, but at the same time, it makes me feel a little bit happy. Everything around me was created for my sake. The sea, the trick, confused me. If that's true. I guess I'm not so crazy myself, after all. You believing in this destiny, definition. You believing in this is the definition of craziness. Probably right. Another gust of wind blast against the pot's walls, smashing the glass to dust and blowing away the concrete crust. I, on the other hand, feel a gentle breeze that only ruffles my hair. Cold. Let's go back inside. I return to my room. Thankfully, it hasn't changed one bit during the minutes I was outside. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hopefully tomorrow will only come after a year. Or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell. At the same time, still being me. Ridiculous milk outside a bag of milk. And yet... And yet... You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill? Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. So goodbye then. No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've played out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you. But was it really necessary? 
You'll see tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad, because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know. It was a joke. Well, anyway, I brush my face, brush my teeth, lie down and start imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all. Of course. I always look sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air. Strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places. Bulging eyes of trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. Then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. Deserved, I guess. I felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, I felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. The silhouettes, letters, and eyes stay here. I guess they like this place. I'm always following my way, keeping at me. And I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today. Still too scared to tell me? Of course! You're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to... tell you a bedtime story? Shh! I was trying so hard here. Did you get it? I'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. I don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that, well, that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. Same story. Yes, 
help. I'm serious. You're not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. I do like you, though. Lead the way. Too. But you heard me. You know what? We're leaving, Tresca.
Much the same ending. Ugh. Well, it's good, but not a lot of direction. All kind of the same. Those, uh, responses give me some slight variations or slightly longer topics. But no branching paths, it seems. Am I misremembering the first game? Am I is it wrong of me to think that there are branching paths? I can't remember. I feel like there were a lot of points, yeah, where the character just gives up on us and they have to restart. Some slightly spooky stuff going on in there, but eh. It's kind of just psychological in theme, not much horror. Eh, regardless. That was milk outside a bag of milk. Outside a bag of milk. Okay, well, with that, we should be done for the night. Thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, we will be back here again tomorrow with yet another new game. So I look forward to that. But until then, thanks for stopping by. Take care, and have yourselves a good night. <laughs>